Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we have a little bit of a treat in that I'm working on a very geriatric PC right now. So the story with this PC is my dad recently sort of forked it over for me to do a little bit of light work on it and that light work is basically just upgrading it from Windows 7 up to Windows 10 and with that I decided I would run some gaming benchmarks because it features some quite antique hardware at least right now for 2020. So let's give an overview and take a look at some of these gaming benchmarks right after the sort of uh, intro swoop. So today, obviously, we're looking at very old hardware, but if you're into newer hardware, there's a bunch of launches out both recently and in the near future from NVIDIA and AMD. And hopefully I'm gonna be making a trip over to the nearest micro center to me to pick up a 5950X on launch day. So if you're interested in higher end hardware and coverage on that, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you won't miss any of that coverage. But let's look at this ancient PC now. So right off the bat, you know this PC is old just looking at the actual case, which is a little bit of a misnomer because the case itself is actually older than the internal hardware because uh, several years ago now, I actually upgraded this PC from the original Athlon 64 CPU to a more modern uh, platform. And that modern platform was an FM2 platform, which even at the time of the upgrade, was somewhat dated, but this PC is mostly just for web browsing in general, so no big deal. So we have an FM2 platform with four gigabytes, four whole gigabytes of DDR4 mem- oh, nope, not DDR4, DDR3 memory, and not the fastest DDR3 either, but DDR3 nonetheless, one stick, single channel, four gigabytes. And all that raw power is feeding into the sort of crown jewel of this build, and that's the AMD A10, 6800K. Now, while if it was an Intel CPU, the 6800K actually sounds like a somewhat respectable i7 processor from back in the Skylake era. With the AMD APUs, it is just a quad core APU, four CPU cores, and I believe it was featuring the HD 6870D graphics. Nope, looked it up, it's the HD 8670D graphics, but nonetheless, graphics are good, I suppose. Now, here's the thing with this APU. It came out in an era where these APUs were being compared to Haswell CPUs. And specifically, this APU was being compared a lot by AMD to the i5 Haswell processor, so the 4000 series. And AMD was trying to compare it in gaming to the i5s because even though the i5s on the Intel side of things had much better CPU cores, the integrated graphics of the i5 processors was nowhere near what AMD had on its APUs. So the selling point was basically this. You could buy a quad core CPU now and actually get up and running on gaming for a very affordable price and then down the road you could upgrade your graphics and you would still have four cores and four threads and this was at a time when four cores and four threads was sort of the go-to standard for a gaming rig now obviously higher end gaming rigs at the time were uh, having i7s four cores and eight threads thrown in there but a lot of people were still targeting those i5 processors at the time with four cores and four threads for their gaming rigs and amd selling point was a really good one in that you could get this quad core up and running and upgrade the graphics down the road and you could start off with uh, at least a decent gaming experience and then once you had the money together have an excellent gaming experience. Now the 6800K from AMD was based on the 32 nanometer process from AMD so uh, the CPU cores themselves have obviously not aged overly well but today here in 2020 we're going to look at some modern AAA titles. Nope. Nope, we're definitely not doing that. We're gonna look at some modern esports titles that are still widely played here in 2020. And I was trying to throw some things at this CPU, or this APU rather, that it could actually run, knowing that it only has four gigabytes of DDR3 memory. So uh, yeah, I have a few titles we're gonna take a look at. And if you're coming across an APU like this, a, know that you better be getting it for dirt cheap if you're planning to use it at all, and B, understand modern AMD APUs can do much, much better 
in gaming performance than this thing can. But uh, yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and look at a few of these benchmarks. So I wanted to start with a title. I was almost 100% sure this APU could actually run. So I went with League of Legends at 1080p on the medium preset. And yeah, it can absolutely run this title, averaging 36 FPS with a 1% low of 25 and a 0.1% low of 18. So obviously this isn't a great gaming experience, but this is a slower paced title to begin with. It doesn't require a bunch of twist which reactions like an FPS game may and yeah it actually looked just fine at 1080p so this was a fine gaming experience for League of Legends though when you're looking at League of Legends that's pretty much the lowest bar you can possibly set for a gaming rig. Then I moved off to CSGO on low settings at 720p and I was actually really surprised that I not only got a playable frame rate but I actually got sort of busy playing uh, this bot match where I wasn't even really benchmarking so much as just playing the game. So I saw an average FPS PS of 54, 1% low of 30, and a 0.1% low of 13. Now, I don't think with this resolution and this frame rate you could be overly competitive, but you could at least play the game and probably have a little bit of fun as long as you're not an overly competitive person, and as long as you also realize that everyone else playing in the match probably has much better hardware than you, but it was a playable experience. And finally, I ran Overwatch on the low preset at 720p, and this title in particular looked terrible at 720p on the low preset and not only that the frame rate was not smooth enough or high enough to really be called playable in any way so maybe if you threw in a second four gigabyte stick of memory into the system you might actually get enough frames to make this a playable experience but overwatch at 720p on the low preset is just an ugly game to begin with so yeah this was not a playable experience it's definitely not something i would recommend running on a cpu like this if you don't have a dedicated GPU or at least a uh, dual channel memory setup. So this video didn't really have a point of uh, trying to recommend old hardware for you to purchase or really even use. This was really more a video out of pure curiosity because I had for a limited time a PC on my hands that was much older than even some of the used hardware that I like to play around with. Uh, usually right now I go as far back as sort of the Ivy Bridge i5 era which is in the same era as this hardware. The difference is usually I'm working with an i5 and a dedicated GPU with a dual channel memory kit. This is just such a niche uh, PC that I would absolutely not recommend. I wouldn't recommend you build it even if the parts are almost free. Now, Obviously, if you have nothing else and the parts are free, then sure, go ahead. But uh, I wouldn't actually pay real money for this PC right now in 2020 other than maybe for the case itself, which by the way, NZXT's case here, uh, yeah, it still supports modern hardware. It actually uh, has a good layout. You have a removable drive tray in the uh, bottom of it in case you have a huge GPU. Uh, outside of the front panel only having USB 2.0, uh, yeah, the, the case itself is actually still a solid case even in 2020. Uh, maybe you wanted the power supply out of this because when I upgraded the PC, I did put a decent power supply in it back when I actually installed the 6800K originally. But as far as the actual processor or the APU rather, the motherboard, the RAM, None of that's really worth salvaging out of a PC like this, though if it's all you have, then yeah, you can actually still play some games, even some competitive games. You yourself might not be competitive, but you can hopefully still have a pretty good time. And there's a ton of indie games on PC that this PC could actually uh, game and run fairly well. Uh, so yeah, if you are into the indie game scene or the uh, easy to run esports scene, then this PC might still be enough for you even here in 2020. But here's where I kick it back to you guys, and this is one that I'm really curious about. Let me know some of the older hardware you're still gaming on, and let us also know what kind of performance you're getting out of that some of that older hardware, because some of these comments may help me look at uh, specific GPUs or CPUs or just CPU GPU combos to test out in the future. So let me know some of your older hardware you're running on in those comments down below. And of course, if you like this video and you want to see more testing of old hardware that probably is not something you should be using in 2020, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.